Welcome to day 281. We are getting up there. Um, we are definitely getting into uh, the Gospels, uh, talking more and more about the signs of the end times, but not quite to the bulk of uh, Jesus talking about the end times. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. So let's start about start out with the miracles um, that uh, Jesus is is doing here. So you get your miracle list out, and of course, I already have mine going. This is getting pretty long, uh, and we're going to start in Matthew nine, uh, verse twenty seven through thirty, and. Again, knowing the miracles is quite an uh, awesome thing. After Jesus left the girl's home, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying, and Jesus asked them, Do you believe I can make you see? And they said, Yes, we do. Uh, then he touched their eyes, and he said, Because of your faith, it will happen. <laughs> uh, don't tell anyone about this, he said. And they went out and told everybody. So there he, he heals two blind men. Then he, he uh, uh, has a demon-possessed man that couldn't speak. He, he casts out the demon and he speaks. That's in verse 32 through 33. Uh, so Jesus cast out the demon and, and then the man began to speak. Okay, and, uh, and then in Mark 6, let's see here. Mark 6, we go to verse 5. And it says, and because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. So he's in his own hometown and they all don't believe that he is the Messiah. They're all looking for the Messiah. They're all expecting him. And they all know that he's going to come from Bethlehem, uh, be born in Bethlehem. And um, and it's not like there was a, you know, a million people in the city. Uh, so it's not like they couldn't have figured this out. But again, that was all part of God's plan. And he, and because of their disbelief, um, he couldn't do anything for them. But there were people there who did believe, and he healed them of their sickness. Um, and that's the key to that part of it. It's not like nobody in the land did. Uh, he couldn't. He couldn't uh, um, save or uh, or heal. That wasn't true at all. Um, and then uh, the next miracle, which is great, he gives his disciples authority to cast out demons, to heal the sick, and to raise the dead. That's awesome. I'd be like, what? This is great. What a great day this is. Jesus gave me the ability to do this. And he says, go out and do it freely. And so they do. What a, what a cool thing. So this is in Mark 6, ver uh, three different verses. Verse 7, it says, And he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. That's a miracle in itself. And then verse 12 and 13, it says, So the disciples went out telling everyone that everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God. Verse 13, And they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, anointing them with olive oil. What a cool thing uh, that that was given to them. Now, um, in Matthew 10, let's see, Matthew 10 here. In verse 21, we're going to spend some time in Matthew. Matthew is a great book uh, to, to look at for all the things, and, and it's one of my favorite books that we'll use. But also Mark, Luke, and John are there to testify uh, and to look at and, and see the similarities of what uh, is being said in Matthew. Um, Matthew 10, 21 and 22. So we have... And a brother will betray... I'm sorry, that was the wrong thing. Um, yeah, this is right. Church age betrayal. Um, and brother will betray his brother to death. Church age meaning in our age. Get away. Sorry, I have a fly in here. Um, brother will betray brother. And this is during the church age. And he's saying this to the disciples that this is going to happen to them. And during their time, and all the way through to church age, this is happening. Father will betray his own ch child, and children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. Okay, so there's all this betrayal going on, and people lying, and, and we have that today on an immense uh, proportion. And you have kids killing their parents, and parents killing their kids and in horrible ways. What a terrible, terrible thing. We got 60, 70 million now we're up to. Uh, 
children that have been uh, murdered in the womb. What a horrible, horrible thing. Don't tell me that there were 70 million rapes and they all deserve to uh, have been killed. That's ridiculous. Um, so this is a hateful thing that's been going on since Christ was here. And then in verse 22, it says, and all nations, all nations will hate you because you're a Christian. Well, there we go. That's what we have today. Um, and it was going on there. I mean, before they even started, people were hating them. They didn't want to, they didn't want to hear that. Um, now in verse 26, so here, here we go. We're, we're getting into these signs of, uh, during the church age that is foreshadowing what's going to happen in the tribulation and, uh, and, and the, and the great white throne judgment and stuff. 1026. But don't be afraid of those who, who threaten you, for the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made, made known uh, to all. So if we go to Revelation 20, and Revelation 20, verse 12, it talks about the books being open. Uh, sorry, I didn't have this marked. 20, verse 12. I saw the dead, both great and small. The dead. So everybody who's in hell at the great white throne judgment, this is the end of Revelation, great white throne judgment, they're going to be raised for judgment. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne, and the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. And it goes on and talks about the sea gave up the dead, the death and the grave gave up their dead, and all who were on all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Everything is going to be revealed. Everything we do is written down. Every our motives, God knows everything. Now, we have different judgments. We've talked about the judgment seat of Christ in, in Jeremiah, among many other things. Hopefully, you have those lists. So go get your judgment seat of Christ list out. And we read in verse 32, everyone who acknowledges, acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. So what does that mean? Well, at the judgment seat of Christ, at the, after the rapture, we're in heaven for seven years. That's the judgment seat of Christ. And Satan can be accusing all day long. He is accusing every day, even now. Um, but in the court, when we, when we are up there, we don't face any condemnation. Our sins are forgiven. They are far away from us as the east is from the west. God remembers them no more. And because we acknowledge Christ here on earth, he's going to say, this one is mine. So that's that verse that they're talking about. So that's the judgment seat of Christ. And then the great white throne judgment in the very same uh, passages in verse 33 but everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So when the sea and the dead and the grave give up their dead, and that's at the great white throne judgment, he's going to deny them up in heaven, and they will be thrown into uh, the lake of fire. So those two right there are the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Okay, so this is why you have to write this stuff down in these lists, so that when you get into a time frame, you kind of know where you are and you have all these references. Now, vengeance is God's. This was, this was great. And then in verse 34, the very next verse, it says this. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. What? Wait a minute. We talking about, why, why did, Jesus is peaceful. He didn't, no, Jesus is saying this. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. This is an exclamation, he says. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. What is he going to do when he comes? When he comes at the second coming, boom, he will annihilate the armies of the world at, at uh, Armageddon. He did not come to bring peace to the earth. Now, when he sets up his kingdom, he will be here and he will rule with authority. Uh, whether there's peace at that point, well, that'll be strange to be seen uh, because there'll be people who won't want to follow him, even in the thousand year reign. Otherwise, there wouldn't need to be another great white throne or a great white throne judgment at the end. So that is your day 281. I sure hope you took great notes. So I'll see you tomorrow.